Number 28, using information in example 20.6, what would be the Hall voltage if a two Tesla field is applied across a 10 gauge copper wire, which is 2.588 millimeters in diameter, carrying a 20 amp current? So um, take, check out number 22 as a review for Hall voltage. This one's gonna get a little more complicated, but it shouldn't be bad. So Hall voltage here, E, is gonna be equal to the magnetic field applied, multiplied by the path length, okay? Uh, then multiplied by the velocity of the moving particles. So the uh, we know B, they told it to us, it's gonna be 20, okay? Oh, excuse me, not 20, two, <laughs> I misread that. So it's two. The path length is basically just the diameter, okay? Uh, but we need that in meters. And check out, like I said, it'll make sense in number 22. Um, so we're gonna take 2.588 and multiply it by 10 to the minus three. And now we need the velocity, but we don't have the velocity. What do we have instead? We have the current. So somehow we have to relate current to velocity, okay? And the only way to do that is by talking about something known as uh, the, uh, the drift velocity, essentially. So I equals NQAVD. In other words, the um, density of the charges in the material that you're talking about, in this case, is copper times the charge. All right, of each um, electron basically that's flowing times the cross-sectional area of the wire um, times the drift velocity. So in other words, these two are equivalent. So what I'm gonna do is solve that equation for V sub D. So that's equal to now current divided by NQ times the area, okay? Current they gave to us is 20, that's simple, okay? This is 20. The charge is simple, that's just the charge of an electron. Okay, that's one point because that's what's flowing. That's what flows in with current, right? So that's just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. Cross-sectional area is relatively easy because, so let me just write this all over here. So this is 20 over then. That was 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. This is cross-sectional area. So remember area, this is a wire, so it's pi r squared. They didn't give you a radius. They gave you diameter though, right? So the radius then would just be half of that. So just take 2.588 over two. So, and then, so that'd be 1.294 times 10 to the minus three, because we need that in meters. That would be the radius, okay? And you're gonna take that and then you're gonna plug it in for that radius there. All right, and I realize I'm gonna, well, I'm way off the page. Maybe I can try to bring this back. Let's see if I can. All right. So what I'm gonna do is just plug that in now, since I have it. This is 1.294 times 10 to the negative three, okay? And now I need to find this N, that's the hard part, okay? That's basically the charge density. So in other words, what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna realize that copper here, it doesn't really tell us, but copper is only carrying uh, one, let's say, electron per atom, okay? That's an assumption we have to make. So to calculate N here, what I'm gonna write is we have one electron per single atom, okay, per atom. Now, what I need to do is I have to somehow, you know, I'm gonna be using its density at some point, okay? So what I'm gonna to have to do is I have to try to get to mass somehow. So I have to go through like Avogadro's number and all this. So I'm gonna do atoms and mole on the bottom. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole, all right? Notice the atoms will cancel. Now I gotta get rid of moles, so therefore I need the molar mass of copper. And the molar mass of copper is about 63.54 grams per mole. Mole goes on the top because I want them to cancel, right? So now notice the atoms are gone, the moles are gone, I'm left with grams, but you know this is physics, so we don't want grams, we want kilograms. So you gotta get rid of the kilo, uh, grams. So 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. See you later, gram. And uh, now, right, uh, I need to somehow find, you know, the I need. I have electrons here, right? I gotta find the electrons per volume. So now I need the density, all right? So basically now kilograms on the top, cubic meters on the bottom, and this is a known density. That it's eight point, for copper that is. This is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third kilograms for every cubic meter. Notice what's gonna cancel. Now the kilograms go bye-bye, and what are you left with? You're left with basically number of electrons per cubic meter that's known as the electron density. That's what we need. So that's what goes in here for N, all right? So why don't we calculate that now? So it's gonna be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 1,000 times 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. 
and then divide that now by 63.54. I get about 8.34 or so, 8.34 times 10 to the 28th, all right? Electrons per cubic meter, those are all in the right units, so simply take that now and plug it in. That's gonna be your VD, okay? And then what you're gonna do once you calculate this, you throw it on into this equation. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all in one step. So let's start with the 20 over there on the right-hand side. So 20 divided by now parentheses. That value we just found, 8.34 times 10 to the 28th, times then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, times then pi, times then our radius of 1.294 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. I get a value of about 2.85 times 10 to the minus fourth, and now throw that on into the whole equation there. So multiply that answer by two, then multiply it by 2.588 times 10 to the minus three. So I get a voltage here, whole voltage of about now, looks like, what is it? 1.48, I guess, 1.48 times 10 to the minus sixth. And that'll be in terms of volts, all right? You can do microvolts if you want. It doesn't matter. But that's it. All right. So hopefully that helps, guys. Um, complicated problem, but not terrible. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I will uh, look forward to helping you with more problems. All right. I'll see you uh, soon. Take care.